Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was what three th things says a lot about a programmer's quality? So let's get into it. Well, let's start with say as well, I can only give you the three things that I personally notice when I hire people or when I'm part of the hiring process and like all the things that I pay attention to and the things that I think has been most of the like the determining factor for the quality of the programmers that I worked with and the first thing is going to be their outlook on their profession in other words uh, the the attitude they have towards their profession is going to tell you quite a lot about the sort of person they are like the sort or rather the sort of the, the, the investment that they are making into their own craft. I have worked with uh, programmers who don't know that they aren't programmers anymore, they are managers. They like basically come in and I ask them about, you know, how do you like, what do you do in your spare time? And like, are you interested? Do you have any technologies that you are currently interested in and things of this nature? There's not a hard requirement for you to like code in your spare time and you shouldn't feel that need. But what I've found is that the, the programmers who have a genuine interest, it doesn't have to be specifically in, into code, but the people who have a, curi a healthy curiosity for things are the sort of people that you want to hire because these are the sort of people who will, when they're faced with a challenge, they will actually go in and be genuinely interested in solving that problem. But what you don't want is to have some person who either doesn't give a shit about anything, like they have no flair, no energy, like there's no fire in their eyes. They have no no interest in the craft. It's this is just a job for them. There's nothing more to it than like in their spare time, all they do is watch television. That fl without that, the flair. This is the sort of person who will well fail you a lot of the time. I've, as far as I've seen, they will usually fail or like be completely indifferent to the outcome of pro some projects or like it's uh, it's not a great attitude. It's it lowers the productivity as well and like the general well uh, wellness of the office culture when you have such an individual and for people who I can the other version is like the manager types where you they basically go in and we want to hire them as a programmer but all they talk about is uh, administrative work and they basically speak as if they haven't and this is it's actually a lot of the a lot of the time uh, that I find that this to be this to be true they have worked as in a more senior or like consultant type of role for so uh, without actually writing code like they don't actually know how to write software anymore the only thing they talk about is like uh, typical management type of uh, type of things and always have the perspective of uh, fr from that angle if you will and that's not a good thing if you're hiring a programmer so having people who have a very healthy outlook on their craft is a very good thing you want people with a you know a fire in their eyes people who have a genuine interest in learning and adapting to new situations that will tell you a lot and as i said it doesn't have to like they don't have to sit and code 24 7 they just have to have an interest in things and apart from that, I would say their personal process is a very big tell as well. If you have a person who sits by themselves and don't talk, like they don't talk to anybody, they try to avoid human contact as much as possible, or like they, uh, they get defensive about things, or like in code reviews, stuff of this nature, that is a very bad thing. It's a very, very bad thing because these are the sort of, like, uh, it's... Uh, especially if they get defensive that is really really bad if you have one of these lone wolf type of people you it's very very tricky to make these people co cooperate with other people it's because that's um, i mean it they can be defensive for any number of reasons and they can try to be on their own for any number of reasons but the outcome is always the same and that is that they work in isolation, there's no, um, not very little in terms of knowledge sharing and encouragement and once again this lowers the value of your office culture which is one of the most important things you have 
when you're building a software team because like what you want are people who have a have a personal process that is going to improve them over time a lone wolf will not necessarily will they may become a domain expert but you're not going to get much value out of that person in comparison to somebody who has a self-evaluation process and understand the value of having peers and having a collaboration with other people because i mean you achieve mastery not just by you know sitting by yourself you you should have to have you should have that part as well you need to do your own experimentation of course but collaborating with other people and learning from other programmers and re having reviews and uh, peer reviews and all that stuff that's the sort of thing that will like refine your own processes and you are more likely to have this person adjust into a like you, you will get people to align on a joint goal and be able to work towards the same goal if they call, if they have a personal process that basically includes other people but if their personal process is that they're just going to sit there until they figure it out themselves or they like they don't want other people to like you really interact with other people or things of this nature like then they're basically just going to waste time i can you you will notice this very quickly with people who are like who are this way the worst thing is when they are so set in into this mindset that they waste like maybe several days on a problem that they could have solved if they just talked to somebody but they don't so that personal process and how they approach solving problems is a very key thing like are they good at structuring their work do they understand how to improve themselves do they realize what they need in order to solve these sorts of problems that's a very good big tell as well and finally, I will say that uh, a person's or a, one of the most telling things for a, a software developer's like quality has to do with the, like their social skills, like their personal maturity as an individual and the way that they carry themselves, if you will. Uh, because usually you will see, and this has to do with, uh, it has to do with partly personal maturity, but it also has to do a little bit with seniority and feeling comfortable in your role. A very junior, like a juniors are usually fairly insecure uh, when they are in job interviews and things of this nature, they usually have a little, feel a bit of stress. And the same, th kind, same thing kind of goes for uh, uh, like uh, sometimes like managers and stuff of this nature. Uh, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you don't want some pompous asshole who just thinks that they know absolutely everything. You want that. Uh, you want a person who has a fairly like uh, who knows the lingo, who uh, who says like uses the correct words and has the right mindset that very clearly indicates that this person kind of knows what they're what they're talking about. But they also need to have that balance, like that uh, that cooperation mindset I talked about earlier, where they're humble enough to understand that they can improve themselves. Like uh, as an example, you will see a lot of inexperienced and people, inexperienced programmers and naive programmers talk about a lot of the trend technologies and st stuff of this nature. If you ask them about what should we pick for a given problem, while the more senior developers who have had enough like experience, they won't feel the need to impress as much. They will simply state that, well, it kind of depends on the situation. Uh, I would make these way offs and stuff of this nature like they will very quickly show you through their personal security that they are not they, they they don't feel the need to drop a bunch of technology or name drop technologies they simply feel they're secure in themselves and that's social so that social aspect it's it's a very big tell how good the programmer is so I I, uh, yeah, I would say that those are my three things. So what I want you to take away from this is that first and foremost, when it comes to like, th if we're just going to mention three things that uh, is a big tell how good a programmer is. The first thing is like their attitude towards their craft. If they have a passion, like if they're interested in things, they are genuinely cu curious, they have a fire in their eyes, that's a very good thing. But be careful with people who don't give a shit, who have no energy, who, uh, you know, who just look at things as a job or that they don't even realize themselves that they're not actually coders, like they are managers or they're people who suggest things. They, 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 
they identify rather than act. They, these are things that you should be on the lookout for. Uh, secondly, their personal process, like having a look at how they actually improve themselves and how they work, because a like high quality programmers usually have a self-reviewing process where they want feedback on their work. They're interested in the opinion opinions of other people, and they understand that there is a collaboration that needs to take place in order for everybody to align on the same goal. They're interested in that collaboration. Uh, lone wolves and people have a, like a process where like they are just working as a complete island. They're just there to do their thing, and then everybody else can kind of do their thing. That's that's a fairly dangerous thing. Uh, so make sure that you have a look at their personal processes, how, the, how they approach solving problems. Because, I mean, they should start out trying to solve it on, by themselves, but they need to be open to the fact that they may not know enough and asking for help is not... I, I mean, a master programmer doesn't fear asking for help. They ask for help when it's needed. And because otherwise you will just, in some cases, sit there and waste a bunch of time when you could actually progress on the problem. And finally, the social aspect is a fairly important thing as well. If the programmer has, feels the need to impress quite a lot, it's very likely because that person is a junior they or fairly inexperienced. They, name, they drop a, lot, a bunch of technologies and try to impress you somehow, things of this nature, or they're very insecure. They, like, they don't seem to be comfortable in their own skin, things of this nature. Uh, but on the flip side as well, I mean, you don't want some pompous person as well. You need to have that for sweet. You want to look for people who have the so, so, like the personal security, but also with a bit of hum, like a fair bit of humbleness. So they understand the previous thing I was saying. They need to understand the value of other people. That's also a very good sign. So that, I mean, if you have a person like that who feels comfortable with, you know themselves, but are also open to listening to other people. That's, uh, that's tech lead material. If they can check all of these bo boxes, they, these are the sort of people who you want because you don't want, you know, in a management, management position, you're do you don't ideally want people who are, you know, spineless. You need someone with a bit of a backbone who can speak their mind, but at the same time, uh, respect other people enough to hear them out. So that's going to be my answer. Have a great day.